Hi guys, welcome to the Active Essex YouTube channel. Um, we're following the movement of Keep Essex Active. As you guys are all aware, uh, there's been a lot of uncertain times at the moment. A lot of people stuck at home, kind of finding themselves a bit bored and having nothing to do. So today, you're tuning in with me. My name is Callum. I run a small business called PDMA. Uh, just to give you a bit of a background on what PDMA do, we kind of pride ourselves around the personal development of young people, um, the next generation that's coming up behind us. Um, we channel all of the personal development and individualised support that we give young people through the concept of martial arts. Okay, It's about teaching them a discipline, about giving them some guidance, but also giving them something to enjoy, something that's going to keep them fit and then providing an ear and some kind of emotional support along the way, hoping to just get the most positive outcomes of all young people that are coming up okay today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be talking about the correct way to assume a fighting stance whether that be with your right or left handed we're going to be talking about the correct way to execute a jab punch and a cross punch we're going to be doing some small footwork drills and then we're going to combine all of that together in the hopes that we can give you a small beginner's introduction into the world of mixed martial arts uh, PDMA is due to set up some community-based clubs um, in the Dean School down in Benfleet. So as soon as those are up and running, we'll be looking at kind of pushing mixed martial arts a lot further into the community rather than just some um, introduction videos. Um, but stay tuned for that. There'll be more information on that through um, the PDMA business. Um, before we start anything, as anybody knows, any kind of fitness, any kind of exercises that we do, it's always important to have yourself a drink. Uh, this video is not necessarily exercise based, but there will be some drills. And if it's something you haven't done before, you will find yourself feeling a little bit sweaty and a little bit tired. Um, so that being said, let's do a little bit of a warm up before we do anything else. As we're going to be throwing some punches today, it's very important that we warm up our rotation cuffs in our arms. For those of you that don't know what they are. In short, they're basically the parts of our body that are going to allow us to twist our arms over and allow us to turn and pivot when needed, okay? So we have some in our shoulders, we're gonna warm up our elbow area, and we're also gonna warm up our wrist. So find yourself a bit of space, enough space for you to hold your arms out, left and right. And we're literally just going to start with some small circular wrist rotations going forward. We're gonna get 15 of these in, so feel free to count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And now backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, shake those off, get them nice and loose. We're now gonna start looking at our elbow area. So what I'd like you guys to do is hold your arms in by your side and your forearms out in front of you with your hands facing either forward or in a fist. And we're literally going to flutter our arms like they're little wings, okay? We're gonna go for 15 of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, elbows up at shoulder height, we are going to create some circles just at our elbow, keeping our bicep part of our arm completely still. Let's get 15 of these in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, inside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, shake that off. Get that nice and loose. Should be feeling a little bit more comfortable now. Just to focus on our shoulders now, we're just going to get some circular rotations going forward. We're going to go for 15 of these. 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now back, one, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and there we go. Okay, should be feeling nice and loose now. Our arms and our shoulders should be feeling like we've got some better movement in them. We're going to quickly look at the correct way to assume a fighting stance, okay? This is something I'm not gonna to touch on for too long, but it's very important that we know at least the basics so that we're not just throwing our punches from an open stance and not defending ourselves. The concept of a fighting stance is to assume a position that is going to best facilitate us protecting ourselves or giving us the functionality to strike back if we are competing or if we are sparring or if we're practicing. So if you are right-handed, standing completely straight, I would like you to take a step back with your right foot. You should find that a part of your body twists off a little bit, placing your right hand to your face and your left hand out in front of you. Okay, some people like to fight a little bit more face on and some people like to fight a little bit more side on. For me as a coach, I like to implement the way that young people or any individual that I'm teaching feels the most comfortable. Okay, because in the world of mixed martial arts, there are some things that are very technically demanding and there's some things that you have to adopt in the way that you feel comfortable. Okay, all of my teaching experience, I found that people respond better when you adopt the position that best feels comfortable for you. As long as we, in our fighting stances, are protecting our face, we've got a little bit of a hunch so that we're keeping our chin down and our knees are not completely locked out and we're a little bit loose, we can facilitate most basic punches from this position. This is something that we can touch on and we can develop a lot more at a later date in another video. But for now, what we're going to be looking at is hands up by our face, one foot back, one foot forward, keeping ourselves nice and loose. The one thing I am going to show you guys today, because keeping your chin down is probably one of the most important things about a fighting stance, is grabbing yourself any form of tool and placing it underneath your chin like so. By placing it underneath your chin and having to keep the ball or whatever tool you use there, you're going to ensure that your chin is kept down and your hands will stay up, okay? so. We're not going to use this while we're doing our punching drill, but for anybody that is at home and practicing their fighting stance, please, it doesn't have to be a ball, but use a tool, place it under your chin, keep your chin tucked with your hands up by your face, okay? It's an amazing habit to get into for beginners, keeping your face safe. For left-handed fighters, we're going to adopt the exact same position, okay? So standing straight, we're going to place our left foot back, right foot forward, left hand up by our face, right hand up by our face, keeping our chin down, being nice, loose, knees not locked out, and we can adopt the correct position to throw most of our punches from here, okay? I'm right-handed, so I'm going to adopt a right fighting stance. Now, we're going to learn today the correct ways to throw a jab punch and a cross punch, okay? We're gonna look at the top half of my body mainly, and I'm gonna move my camera down, I'm gonna show you guys the footwork and how we combine it all together. Looking at a jab, and what a jab is used for. A jab is a snap punch, okay? There's not much power behind this punch. It's about kind of, for a temporary second, disabling your opponent, which will allow you to throw your follow-up combinations and your follow-up punches, okay? Again, I'm not gonna go into complete detail on these punches, but I'm gonna give you guys the basics just so that you can function with them, and at later videos, and if the community clubs get up and running, we'll be able to talk about them in more detail then. There'll also be some contact information that you guys can ask any questions, you guys can make some requests on some more videos, and we can work through it in a later date. So, looking at a jab punch, which is our snap, all right? Keeping our hands by our face, we are going to load up just ever so slightly, just to give us a little bit of energy. So I've got a little bit of a twist in, and when I pop my hand out, as you can see, my hand twists over at the end of the punch. You should be able to see my knuckles facing down by the end of the punch, okay? This gives us a little bit of a whip on the end of our punch, gives us a little bit of a snap effect, and our aim is to get this punch out and in as quick as possible, okay? We're not aiming to put much power on this. We're just aiming to get a snap out and in, okay? Some people, as I said earlier, um, it's about kind of doing what you're comfortable with. Some people prefer not to give this little bit of a load up to throw it out. Some people like to step and throw it. Some people like to throw it in their own position, okay? I personally, depending on the scenario, like to give a little bit of a load and a little bit of a step, okay? So that punch, snap punch, turning the wrist over, bringing it straight back to your face at all times. 
You'll notice while I'm doing this punch, my right hand stays protecting my face the whole time. Okay, we do not let this hand drop because then we're exposing ourselves. Same thing for the cross punch. Okay, you will notice that my left hand stays up the whole time. However, this punch is primarily designed to channel a bit more power. So instead of throwing this punch out and bringing it back straight away, we want to lean and drive through with this punch. Lean and drive through with this punch. Okay, the most important thing that you need to do when you're throwing these punches is brief, okay? A lot of beginner fighters and a lot of people that are just introducing themselves to martial art or boxing will always tend to struggle with the concept of having to exhale on a punch and inhale on retraction, okay? If we do not breathe, it means we are not circulating, no oxygen through our body, which therefore means we are not providing ourselves with any energy, okay? Look at it as oxygen is energy. The more oxygen we have, the more energy we have floating around our body. So what that looks like if we start putting our basic instructions together with a bit of breathing is we adopt our fighting stance. I'm right-handed, so my right hand is back. I throw my jab. I like to do a little bit of a load or a little bit of a step. You pick which one you like. I'm gonna do a load here for the video so you can see it nice and clearly. A little bit of a load and shh. A little bit of a load and shh. As you can see, my right hand stays up. Shh. And back. Okay, I'm retracting this hand nice and quick back to my face. A few more for you to see. Another side on angle for you. Okay, the same thing with our right handed cross. Looks very, very similar, except we are not aiming to snap this punch back. We're looking to drive through, which looks a little bit like this. We adopt our stance, chin down. Left hand is going to stay up nice and high, leaning forward with a twist. A side angle for you to see it. Okay, looking at using those two punches in a combination system is your very commonly used combo one, two. Okay, all that is is taking the jab and the cross and sticking them together in a combination of punches, which looks a little bit like this. Assuming our stance, hands up, chin down, jab, cross. Okay, so instead of throwing one punch there and isolating it and bringing it back, we're gonna throw both at the same time. Two, okay, one, two, one, two. And as you'll see, my hands are staying up at all times. One, two, okay, so what that looks like if we assume it properly is, Fighting stance, hands up, chin down. A different angle for you to see. Okay, as you will see, my left hand is out and in. Right hand stays out a little bit longer as it is a drive through. Those are the basic two punches that we use pre predominantly in mixed martial arts. Um, you'll find them commonly used in boxing as well. Uh, quite basic in terms of success rate. So what I mean by success rate is in terms of how many times people throw them to how many times people land them successfully, they have a very high success rate, okay? Which is why those punches are so commonly used. What I want to move on with you, uh, with you guys now is to a little bit of footwork, okay? Obviously, you can't see the footwork in the angle that we're in. So I'm going to move the camera down for you and I want to talk to you about the bottom half of the start and how to correctly take some movement and steps. Um, it's very, very important while you're watching this <coughs> that you keep in mind these are something we're gonna be combining with our punches in just a moment, okay? So they're not isolated movements, they're not things that are done by themselves. They very, very commonly follow up with punches and defenses. All right, so I'm gonna quickly just move the angle down for you and I wanna show you a little station that I've drawn out on the floor. You won't need necessarily cones for this. You can mark it out with whatever you like, but it's always nice to have just a bit of a guideline in terms of knowing where to step. So as you guys can see down here in front of me, I have a set of nine cones. Okay, you will see eight cones, sorry. You will see there's four blue ones forward, back, left and right. And there are four red ones on the corners. Looking back at what our fighting stance was like, as I said to you, I'm right-handed and right-footed. So my right foot is back, left foot is forward. 
Something very, very important that we need to understand is that we never cross our feet ever when we are moving for beginner martial arts, okay? It's something that we can look at at a later date because there are switch steps and so on. But for now, we are gonna remain with the concept of never crossing our feet. So on my top half, I'm assuming my fighting position and I'm gonna show you guys the correct way to move forward and back. And this is a nice little drill to do at home. You don't need cones, you can mark it out of anything you like. The blue cones are going to be used for the very, very, very beginning movements. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of an advanced movement drill on the red cones, okay? So assuming my fighting position, I've got my right foot back, just facing out a little bit. I've got my left foot forwards, and I'm going to show you guys the correct way to move. Whenever we are moving forward or left for my right-handed fighters, we are going to always step with our front foot forward or left for my right-handed fighters is always going to be led with the front foot. Now, if I'm moving back or to the right, that is always going to be led with my back foot. If you are left-handed and we adopt a left-handed fighting position, it will be forward and right, always with the front foot, and it would be back and left, always with the rear foot. Okay, so most of these drills, you'll start to notice that anything we do on the right side, we completely just reverse it for the left side. So, taking those steps into consideration, if I was to step forward, I would lead with my front, I lead with my front, follow with my back, step back to the middle, lead with my left, follow with the back, back to the middle. As you can see, guys, my knees are not completely locked out, I'm bent, I'm loose, I'm comfortable, I'm allowing myself fluid movement, okay? Leading with the back foot now, back, meet with the front, back to the middle, right, lead with the front, okay? As you can see, they're very, very simple steps. I'm not crossing my feet, okay? I'm leading with the correct foot and ensuring that I remain balanced at all times, okay? This is, on the blue cones, is a nice beginner's drill that you can combine with your one-two punches, which I'm just gonna show you in just a moment. But for now, isolating the footwork, nice fighting starts, nice and loose, forward, back, left, Right, forward, back, left, right, forward, back, left, right, okay? Never crossing my feet. Once you feel more comfortable with this, you can start mixing up your patterns. You can go forward, right, left, right, back, back, forward, and you can mix it up and just get comfortable with the way that you need to move. As you can see, I keep a nice space between my feet, keep myself nice and loose, nice and balanced, and everything is comfortable and smooth, okay? If you then start to feel a lot more comfortable with this, we can look at cross pivoting on a diagonal, okay? Now, it still works in the same concept that anything behind us is followed with, uh, led with the back foot. Anything in front of us is led with the front foot. Now, as you know, or would have probably seen at some point, that fights do not stay stationary in one space, okay? Competing in sport, you never find a sport fight taking place just standing on the spot, okay? So we usually turn and we have different angles, okay? We're not gonna touch too deeply on them today, but I'm gonna demonstrate just a little bit how we can angle ourselves off. Okay, the ones behind me are led from my back foot. And as you can see, I'm not crossing my feet, but I am placing them at a different angle. Okay, for the front ones, I'll lead over here. Okay, now at a later date, there are switch steps that we use to move, but we're not necessarily gonna to touch on them today. It's something we can talk about in another video. So for now, we're still gonna keep our feet not crossing over. Okay, and if you get comfortable with the blue cones, you can start touching on the reds. Okay, now that's a nice little comfortable drill that you guys can be doing at home. We're now going to look at quickly combining our fighting stance, our one-two punches and our footwork together. So I'm just gonna bring the camera angle back up, back to me again. 
Perfect. Okay, so keeping in mind what we've done on the floor <coughs> with our footwork drills, we're now going to combine that with our fighting stance and our steps, okay? So for those guys that are comfortable with throwing the jabs and the crosses singly, comfortable with throwing the jabs and the crosses together, and comfortable with the footwork by itself while adopting your fighting stance, this is for you guys that are comfortable enough to put it all together, and we're basically now creating our first simulation of what it would be like to either spar or compete in either boxing or MMA. So, assuming our fighting starts, you know, right hand up, prick my face, left hand in front of me, but still at head height, chin drops, knees nice and loose. I'm going to take my steps and throw a one, two at the end. Step back, back to the blue cone, one, two at the end. Step forward, to the side, one, two. Step to the side, to the side, one, two, okay? This is a nice little drill to get you learning to coordinate all the movements at the same time, okay? Again, as we've done in the footwork drill, we'll start off going forward, back, left and right, and then once you guys are comfortable with that, we'll start mixing it up. So just to give you a little demonstration on a front view and a side view, it looks a little bit like this. Fighting stance. Shh, shh. And for another angle for you to see. Shh, shh. Okay, there you have it. So that is a few little drills that you guys could be doing at home just to give you guys a beginner's introduction to some mixed martial arts stuff, some boxing stuff, um, learning to use a fighting stance correctly, learning to throw a nice comfortable jab, cross and a little bit of footwork. You've tuned into Active Essex YouTube channel with me, Callum, who runs PDMA. If you guys liked the video and enjoyed it, please give a like, please subscribe to the channel. <coughs> a little bit of a comment at, at the end would be great and uh, see you guys next time.